Welcome to another edition of the Dogger Pass Podcast. This for UFC 251. We're going to Fight Island, finally. Um, people, somebody in the comments or in Twitter asked us to wear Hawaiian t-shirts. I don't do this, but if I'm getting turned up on the beach, this is kind of the look that I'm going for. I'm joined in studio by Cody Saftik, who is wearing his beach wear. It's hot as fuck on this beach, Paul, let me tell you. It gets hot underneath these lights. Well, I'll tell you, if I was at the beach, and uh, for full disclosure, I have pants on. But yeah, yeah, this is my uh, beach wear. You've been lifting weights during quarantine here, kid? No, I've been trapped inside like everybody else. I mean, I feel like... I'm red like a lobster. You, you should have uh, seen before the show started, Cody was out here flexing. He no. looks like he's put on a he put on a little bit of muscle mass. And hey, we're, we, we, we support that. We support that. Doing those fastings, you only eat once a day and you can eat whatever you want, pal. You Cody was like all... 8 o'clock at night. Cody was all too ready to just peel the shirt off as soon at as he came At your and Mayo's advice, by the way. I so mean, take you that for brought you it will. up. No! You brought it up and we said, yeah, do that. And you know what? I, d- I think it was a great idea. <laughs> I think it was a great idea. It's really hot in here anyway. Anyway, let's get into the action. Great. Three title fights. Hot card. Hot card. Uh, three title fights. Oh. Are... Hold on. What? Giveaways. I got giveaways. For, oh yeah, I forgot for about people. that. Hot giveaways. See, I, I I don't do I don't do these things. I just wanted to get right into the action. But yeah, Pat has like a whole bunch of uh, millionaire maker giveaways to uh, to give you guys. So uh, he'll let you know how to get into that right now. Yeah. So here's the deal. We're going to be giving away 20 Millionaire Maker tickets. There's a Millionaire Maker on DraftKings this week. It's a $25 entry. So each of these tickets worth 25 bucks. I will be doing that giveaway noon on Thursday on my Twitter account, at the PME. All you need to do is follow that account. You tune in at noon Eastern time. The draw is open for two hours. Uh, the rules will be up there. I think it's like retweet and like reply with your DraftKings handle. And boom, you're in that draw for Millionaire Maker tickets. We're not actually drawing them. DraftKings is drawing them. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, oh, I watch the show all the time, that's fantastic. We appreciate that. But it's not really going to influence the decision. Or maybe it will. Who the fuck knows? Uh, Also, rate and review the audio podcast, especially if you're not in the United States, so Canada, Australia, Croatia, wherever you may be. Just scroll down to the bottom, hit five stars. You have no idea how much that helps in people finding this show. And people should find this show so they can look at Cody's tits. (laughs) I do have nice titties. Uh, yeah, people are gonna people are gonna love those titties. Um, yeah, so basically, what Pat just said there is, usually we like to parlay like, "Hey, we don't make the decision on any of these winners." Blame Pat. Pat you basically, blame Pat. Pat basically <laughs> just <laughs> moved <laughs> it up the chain yeah. there. Yeah. He's just like, Appreciate "If you don't win the money, don't blame me. Blame DraftKings." I like where his head's at because that's that's the exact type of move that I do on a weekly basis. All right, let's get into it. Kamaru Usman taking on George Masvidal. Gilbert Burns out with coronavirus. Um, George Masvidal stepping in on like a less than a week's notice, or basically a week's notice here. Um, Usman minus 270. George Masvidal plus 225. Take it away, Cody Saftik. Okay, first and foremost, it seems like a lot of the narrative for George Masvidal, if you're not backing him, is that he's taking this fight on a week's notice. And then by his own account, once the fight kind of fell through the first time, I didn't really, wasn't training, I wasn't taking it seriously. You see him get on the private jet, he's got a bottle of champagne in his hand, he's eating pizza. Yeah, it's all fake news, man. Eating pizza on the... Uh, let me tell you something. This guy's been fully in camp. And you know this, not by following his social media, but by following Luis Pena and Dustin Poirier, who just recently had fights coming up. This guy's in camp. He's in great shape. Mm-hmm. I don't think none of that'll fool you. I don't think this is a fight of, George knows he can't go five, so he's just going to try and knock out Usman early. I, I don't think that's the case. I think Usman wins this fight. I think Usman wins the decision. What I'm struggling with here is that Usman versus Burns was a much easier fight for for uh, Kamara Usman, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. He's a lot bigger than Burns. I Different guess people style. are saying... People say in the grappling, but he would have had the cardio to just push Burns. The Woodley fight, hey, listen, I give no credit to defeating Tyron Woodley, so I wasn't on this big Burns wagon, and I would have been on Usman for sure. Having him drop out and have George Masvidal, Masvidal is a more credible opponent, in my opinion. Masvidal has better takedown wrestling, he has better striking, he has better cardio, he has a good chin. Not a great chin, not a cast iron chin. He has been knocked out before, he has been dropped multiple times. But a good chin, man. This guy goes down and he gets back up and keeps rocking with you. Decent enough cardio. He poses more problems, and now you're getting a shittier price. That's one thing that I am struggling with. But in order to get better than 270, I'm going Usman. I'm going Usman by decision. In my opinion, honestly, and you guys watch the show. If you do watch the show, if you you watch that breakdown, I was on Team Colby Covington. I wore the Make America Great Again hat. 
for Colby Covington. And I cannot discredit that Usman, in my opinion, a near perfect outing. Everything mm -hmm. was on point. His striking looked better than it ever looked before. 100% his, Usman. His, yeah, his wrestling was on point. Yeah, I'm not going to take down Colby Covington. He's not going to take down me. <clears throat> but it's like this guy's wrestling, top of the division. His striking, largely improving. His cardio, he's deep into the fifth round, and he's fresh, and he's smiling, and he's laughing. How's his chin? Colby's not a power puncher, but Colby hit him with the kitchen sink, and this guy was in phase. He's growing with confidence. I got to say, and, and yes, and we know for sure he's had a full good camp in preparation for this fight. So U Usman's the clear favorite. I know people want to talk this narrative of a flying knee right off the start, or, you know, he knocked out Darren Till with the big right hand, but Usman has not shown a suspect chin. He's not one of these guys that I think is just going to get pieced up striking, and he's got the wrestling to fall back on. Maybe against Burns, he couldn't have fell back on the wrestling. Maybe against Burns, I don't want to be in this guy's guard. But against George, if I if it's getting sticky, if this guy's starting to put some pressure on me, take him down. Mm -hmm. And likewise with Masvidal, coming off a win over Nate Diaz, it's all just glitz and glamour. Nate's a big name. It was a terrible stylistical matchup for Nate. Obviously, George is going to look good in that fight, and he did look good. But I can't translate that to in now looking exceptional against Usman. So Usman by decision is the pick. Yeah, I'm on Usman by decision already. I've got lots of investment in Kamara Usman. I think he should be at least a minus 400 favorite in this spot. I think he wins 8 out of 10. If they fought 10 times, maybe George catches him once. Maybe George wins another decision. I kind of disagree that I think that the Gilbert Burns matchup was a little bit harder. One, they're training partners, so like they know each other's tricks. They know everything that they kind of do. Which makes it easier because he's not going to blast me with a flying knee. That grappling, that grappling is a big time problem. I'm sure Gilbert Burns is caught. He has, has wrapped up a Kamara Uzman at some point in time like a pretzel um, just on the ground while they're rolling. Okay, like that's got to have happened. I've never seen it. That's um, fair. We know, that's we fair. know a guy who is like been in training with him. He's not telling me anything about it. I tried to like, you know, get in there a little bit to find out some info, but I understood that he can't really tell me these secrets. Yeah. But uh, I, I imagine that they, it would have been a much, I mean, it's, it takes away his wrestling. I don't think Usman was going to be like, I want to take down. He would probably have done it and tried and know how, known how to stay safe against Burns. I think against Masvidal, that grappling, that threat is severely, severely limited. Now the striking advantage, or the striking is a much bigger threat, but we just take him down. We get him up against the cage, we take him down. Fair. Kamaru Usman's a smart guy, smart fighter. He's been thinking about this Masvidal fight because it's the big money fight kind of in the division right now. And the final thing about this, there's like on one of the sports books out there, very credible place. They're, uh, they have like the guy who runs it. And sometimes it's like the guys who run it, you're like, why are you tweeting this? I'm, I'm wondering why, like, are you trying to get more action on one side? I'm always, you know, I've always got my one eyebrow raised, kind of like, what are you really up to? This guy seems pretty credible for the most part. And he said 91% of tickets, 91% of tickets are coming in on George Masvidal as the underdog, which is why this line isn't moving. I feel like the Sharps are pounding Usman, or pounding Usman in parlays. And uh, and everybody with twenty fifty dollar bets are thro are throwing on George Street Jesus. The people loved Street, Street Jesus. I just think that, I mean, coming off of beating it's Nate, re it's coming off of bias, beating man. beating Nate, recency bias beating Nate Diaz, and uh, and yeah, the other guys. Like, I don't know. Like this is a big step up. He's going from you know. Single A to the majors, essentially. This is... Okay, to put things into perspective, I think I seen the stat the other day that he's got 43 fights. So there's never been a fighter with 43. He's the most most experienced fighter to be getting his first UFC title shot into his career. He has 13 pro losses. But Dominic Cruz, and hey, he knew who he's talking about. He's a UFC broadcaster. He's a former fighter. The guy's a smart guy. He comes out and says, George Masvidal's never even been dropped. This guy's, this guy's a fighter. Mm -hmm. George Masvidal's been dropped plenty of times. Darren Till dropped him. That's just recently. Michael Chiesa dropped him. Habalov that. hopped him. Rodrigo Dam actually TKO'd him back in Sengoku back in the day. The Darren Crookshank fight. It's like, yeah, he fights back. But I think it's crazy to believe he's just like, everyone's got this idea now. That he's always fighting in Kimbo's backyard, man. It's a quarantine card. He doesn't matter. It's a street fight. No, motherfucker. It's not a street fight. It's a five-round MMA fight. Whereas, I'll fully agree. If Usman beats him without taking him down once... Give that guy the BMF title. But mm -hmm. fuck that. Don't take him down. Take him down. Fight the smart game plan. And you know what? Don't take the BMF title. Take the UFC welterweight title home. Because believe what me, happened? that one actually pays the bills. What happens if George loses? Does he lose? Uh, no. What it, happens no, no, to the he BMF retains, title? He retains unless Uzman stands and bangs with him. That's, that's, that's how it is. Okay. That's how it is. Fair enough.
I think that's about all I have to say about this fight. What about you? You good? You could talk about this fight for days, but it's summed up, and there's a lot of people already talking about it. We're both going Usman by decision. I think we've said exactly I'm, why. I'm heavy in. And, and above all else, we're not haters of Street Judas. This is going to be a fun fight. This is going to be a great way to cap off a great pay-per-view. Very interested. But Usman, i got to be on Team Usman. What do you got, Pat? Uh, I, I had that question that I asked you the other day, Paul. Cody, I want to run this by you. So... The prelims start at 2 a.m. local time. Oh, yes, good point. The main event starts at like 6 a.m. or the main card starts at like 6 a.m. Like local sun, time. Sunrise. So, like, like is this, I know Masvidal has like been through a camp and all that stuff, but like he gets over there on like a week's notice. Like, and his coaches, Mike Brown's not going to be in his corner. No, I know. Of, Brown's not Because he's got the Rona. Like, is this going to fuck Ronas. you up? Like, just, like, that weird I think time so. difference? I think so. Yeah, okay, I so... Mean, I, I mean, Kamaru's probably known for a while that about this, that, you know, it's over in Abu Dhabi. It would affect them both the same. It would affect them both the same in that, how do you get ready for, well, we're now fighting at 6 in the morning? And the flip side to that... I mean, you th- stay up all... You, you train, you change your schedule. This is purely hours. This is purely theory, but... but Fuck, man. I've been a fan of Monsadol for a long time. Going back to go back to all of his stuff with Genghis Khan. He, he's a night owl. He trains mm-hmm. at two in the morning. He goes for his runs at two in the morning. Like this guy doesn't sleep but all that often. He stays off. up until seven a.m. every day. No, no. He's been known to go to the clubs until three in the morning and then go hit the road afterwards and do his road work. Like Fair. he's just one of those guys that sleeps all fucking day. That's why they always give him shit about showing up to practice and late. He sleeps during the day. Mm-hmm. Like go back and watch any of this old stuff on. That's how he is. So to honestly fighting at six in the morning, I think that favors George Masvidal. So. But at least Usman's had the. The, uh, the the knowing, he's known yeah, it for yeah, a that he's now. been there and he's adjusted. When I was in Abu Dhabi, it took two days to get adjusted. So it's not like any of these guys are going to be like, and oh, you shit, weren't you weren't going into a con- like a, a fight with a, a certified killer either. <laughs> no, but what you do is you stay up, you stay up late the one night, and then yeah. it, you just put yourself back on schedule. Some people are affected differently. I just don't think it's going to affect either. I don't, I don't think it's something worth playing in. I know what you're saying, Pat, and I can see a lot of these guys on the card it affecting them. Some of these, you know, early prelim guys maybe maybe affects them. Maybe a Maxim Grishin who's also coming on short notice, who's a Russian by way of Ohio coming down to Auburn, maybe affects him. But as far as the main event goes, two consummate professionals. Neither guy known for gassing, especially not Usman. <clears throat> Neither guy's not known for cardio issues. I-, I would say something like that wouldn't affect these two individuals. We have uh, Alexander Volkanovsky taking on Max Holloway. Volkanovsky minus 230. Holloway plus 190. I mean, we already saw this fight. We said It wasn't even all that long ago. And Volkanovsky beat him on the feet. It was competitive, though. So it was it's competitive. A, this is a non-competitive line, but I see what you're saying. He beat him on the feet. Um, uh, c- I don't know how much time Hooker spent with Volkanovski in the lead-up. I know that Hooker likes running out of his own camp a lot of the times. Um, he runs his own gym, yeah. Runs his own gym out in New Zealand. I'm hoping that they spend some time together because Hooker looked, even in defeat, Hooker looked as good as he's ever looked before. Um, Holloway, I, it could be a little bit of mental warfare, but he said that he's hasn't spent any time like training with his actual team and his coaches and stuff like that leading up to this. I know Alexander the Great will be ready, ready for war, as always. I have Usman and Volkanovsky. Um, I think I think the Usman line is much better um, than, than, I guess, the Volkanovsky line is closer to what it probably should be. I've had those two guys parlayed. Um, that's my big play this week. I know it's... I wouldn't even say it's Johnny Public because Public's on uh, on Masvidal this week. So, yeah, Usman Volkanovski. I mean, we just saw it. Volkanovski didn't even really have to use the wrestling, and he still managed to win the fight. That was, like, the big eye-opener. It's just like, well, if he can if he can beat him on the feet, what if he mixes in the grappling as well and he's able to use that? Um, Volkanovski for the win for me. What about you? Yeah, I got to go with Alexander Volkanovski as well. I think we laid it out. We nailed him as the underdog in the first matchup with mm-hmm. Holloway. Plus so, 140. And this is nothing new that, oh, well, you know, he beat him last time. He'll beat him again. It's like the, the name of the game the first time around was get in Max Holloway's face and pressure him. Pressure, 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 pressure. Even though it was at 155 pounds, Dustin Poirier laid out the blueprint. Mm-hmm. Nobody stands with Max Holloway. Nobody stands in front of Max Holloway. Dude, 155 is a different animal. And now that you can take his punches and deliver back some of that fire, stay in his face, close that pocket, don't let him get into his rhythm, you can pressure this guy back and you can beat him. <clears throat> Volkanovski needed to follow that exact same game plan, and he did. And it was a close fight, but he defeated him. Outside of DC versus Stipe, Champion loses his title and gets an immediate rematch. Don't get the title back very often. Mm-hmm. The, the numbers are very low on it. It's actually usually it's the younger fighter ends up doing better in the rematch. 
younger fighter, and this is it's pretty comparable. I mean, pretty. Max Holloway, only 28 years old. The DC mm -hmm. fight, at least DC is the older fighter than Stipe, but all, all the same. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, it's going to be a big task for Holloway to now come back immediately and get the title fight. A lot of champions lose their title, and they don't even want that immediate title fight. Because if I go out and I lose to this guy in the immediate rematch, when am I ever going to get another fight against him? You drop two in a row, Cody Garbrandt and TJ Dillashaw. Like, mm -hmm. He's lucky TJ popped and lost the title because what was the road back to fighting this man again? He just defound, defeated you twice soundly. He'd be, he'd be on the, the <clears throat> Joe Benavidez program. Right, so it's like, you know what? Max is a Hawaiian scrapper. He's a heart of a warrior. He wants this fight. But he, by his own accord, he's like, I didn't ask this fight. Volkanovski asked this fight. So that's a, that's a curious situation right there. Why would Volkanovski, man who just defeated him, be like, I want a rematch right after just lifting the title. Because in his mind, it's like, ah, I could have done better than that, man. I could have beaten him better than that. And that's what he's going to be looking to do here is beat him better than that. Max Holloway, um, again, crazy theory, narrative. It's not even really theory. I mean, it's laid out for you. This guy's five foot 11. He's a big 145 pound fighter. He routinely starts to struggle on the scales at 145. Gets a little harder. Gets a little harder. He decides, I'm going to take a fight at 155 pounds. Because remember, he pulls out of a fight, bad weight cut, decides to jump up to lightweight to take on Khabib gets sick, mm -hmm. cutting to 155 pounds to fight Habib, comes back down, beats Frankie, who's a 35er, mm -hmm. and then another grueling championship weight cut against Volkanovski. And there's this, even though he's known for a great cardio and he never stops and he keeps his pace on you, he's ravishing his body, making these cuts to 145. He wants to fight Khabib to show, hey, if I can hang with an elite level lightweight, I can fight a lightweight. When the fight fell through, he did take that lightweight fight and he got his ass fucking smashed. Drops back down to 145, but you get the feeling that at 28 and 5'11", he's growing out of it ever so slightly. Volkanovski, he, he used to weigh 220 or something when he played rugby. But, like, he's a bonafide featherweight, fits this nicely, should come in great shape, and just do the exact same thing. Pressure him, get in his face, defeat him. I got Volkanovski as well. 230, considering we had him at 140 last time, and it was a close enough fight, I don't love 230, but I'm not going to bail on him and take Max enough, Holloway on that Close enough, but it was definitive. Base. It was definitive. I felt pretty good when I went to the scorecards. Yes. I saw some shit on Twitter, but you always see shit on Twitter. Yeah, those people just bet the other side. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. I got a Holloway by decision, man. What the fuck? I yeah, there's only like, there's one guy on Twitter. It's a Kaposa, the legend. Gravaga. The legend, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's the guy who I actually, when I'm watching on Twitter... I watch his scoring because I, I don't I'm not under the impression that he's wagering. Maybe he is, but it always seems like he's just, you know, right. He's he's doing it. He's a, he obviously watches more fighting than anybody else on the planet. And I think he's on. And that Yola Sanda. Yeah. So I'm always yeah. looking at his scoring kind of like to know where I'm at, because obviously I'm always a little bit slanted. I actually, I try to usually go towards decision with worst case scenario in mind. Yeah. But is, is the thing that you need to do on Twitter, like when you're seeing like the Twitter, like, oh, I have it 10-9, oh, that's a 10-8 round. You have to remember that like those people are basically me who are watching 30 seconds of the five minute <laughs> round and being like, oh, I have money on that guy. It was definitely 10-8, don't worry about that. I'm getting robbed. I lost a by decision prop last night, top rank. Fucking lost a split decision. Same thing. I'm like, God, suck you. Like, I, I know I had that decision. And then you sit there and you think about it. And then you go online and you're like, nah, I didn't have the decision. But a lot of people, they tweet out, whoa, 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 bullshit robbery. And then, yeah, you sit on it and you're like, oh, wait. In high insight, the right man did win. So name of the game, man. Sometimes you get the split. Sometimes you don't. And once we get to this bottom part of the card, man, there's going to be a lot of greasy decisions. FYI. Yeah. Dog City, baby. Um, the last thing I will say about Volkanovski versus Holloway, and we talked about it, obviously, on the first fight between the two of them. Holloway's got, like, really, really, sh like, for being 5'11", really long, he's got really, really short legs. Or, sorry, short, short, short arms. Short yeah, arms. Short reach on him. Um, which is just kind of interesting. I think they, I think Volkanovski actually has, like, a one-inch reach advantage despite giving up, like, four or five inches in height, um, which is kind of crazy. Uh, Holloway extends as good as anybody on those punches. Yes. Like, he's going very, like, he's using every bit of, like, the 68 inches of reach or whatever he's got. Um, I should have said 69 because it would have been much more nice. Um, his, but, his striking but yeah, entries. That's, that's the thing. Don't be fooled by the height because the, the reach is very... Very comparable. Right, and that's my thing, is that Holloway's striking entries are beautiful, but when you have a pressure fighter that's not giving you the time to set up entries, or at least he's the one closing the distance, he's the one closing in the pocket on you, right? Then it's more difficult. Maybe he's made those improvements, but if he even says, well, I haven't really been training with my regular camp, and you know, he's the one that asked for this fight. Yeah, maybe it's all smoke and mirrors. Maybe, maybe it is. But I would say he's not made the necessary improvements with these kind of surrounding situations to beat Alexander Volkanovsky.
Peter Yawn takes on Jose Aldo, Aldo for the vacated bantamweight championship of the world. Yawn, minus 225. Jose Aldo, plus 185. What you take here? Okay, so of the top three fights, if there's an underdog that I would feel has the best chance, I'm thinking it's Jose Aldo. But that being said, I can't bet Jose Aldo, even at a great price tag. I'm not betting Jose Aldo. And I'm especially not betting Jose Aldo on just the pretense of, like, he had a good round against Marlon Moraes. He lost that fight, by the way. Right? And again, I know people felt he won that fight, but he did not win that fight. He lost that fight. He came on like a banshee in the third round, and it was surprising because he doesn't got great cardio, and yet he looks revived in that third. And how is this guy ever going to make 135? Impossible. And he does. And there's a lot of, wow, he looked a lot better than I think we gave him credit for. But against Marlon Moraes... Marlon just got tired. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe he didn't take Aldo seriously. Maybe he thought Aldo's shot and I'll be able to walk right through him. But beyond a round and a half, he just doesn't look good. He looks zapped. And he allows Aldo to get his confidence going and allows Aldo to work his way back in it. And you see that from Aldo the time time. He's known for his leg kicks. Guy does not throw leg kicks anymore. But when he gets feeling good, when he gets feeling classic Aldo, just like the Marlon Moraes fight, he lets those leg kick go. It's reckless abandon, but it's allowing him to get comfortable. And that's where I don't think Jan's going to allow him to get comfortable. He just throws too many punches, and he stays on you. The one thing that, again, could play forward to Aldo is that Jan's got... He's got good power, but it's like volume power. He's mm -hmm. really just got to beat the, pa the piss out of you over a prolonged period of time. And seeing how Holloway was exact, do, able to do exactly that against Jose Aldo, I think Jan's just too fast. He's too fresh. He'll just land too many punches. But again, one thing is if he doesn't get Aldo's respect with his power and Aldo finds himself into rhythm, why can't he come alive? Five rounds should play towards Jan. He's been five rounds before when he's on the Russian regional. Seems to have good cardio. Seems to check out. I know people will point to fights like the Jimmy Rivera fight where he's having some trouble. How is this guy getting a title shot coming off a win over Faber? This and that, this and that, this and that. But it's like a passing of the torch. When, when Henry Cejudo was like, you know what? I'm hanging it up. Yeah, Al Jermaine deserves the shot. But Jan was the one coming out of everybody's mouth. Like, give Peter Jan the fight. Give Peter Jan the fight. Who cares he just beat Faber? This guy's legit. Mm -hmm. We want to see Sterling versus Jan. Now you get Aldo. We didn't want this fight. We didn't want Cejudo versus Aldo. No. We don't want Aldo versus... And, and, and now I'm going to bet Aldo? I'm like, no, I'm going to bet Peter Jan. But that one's got me a little... I got no shirt on, but I'm sweating. <laughs> and that's the one I'm sweating, bro. Like, I... I some some doesn't feel all that right, but Peter Yan should win this fight. And I'm a big Yan supporter. I think he just keeps the train rolling and the good times going. I have Peter Yan in a parlay already, but I'm actually my my bigger investment is just in the over two and a half rounds in this one. I think Fair. I think Yan, you're kind of talking about it. Not the biggest murderous power puncher. He does actually have a lot of knockdowns on his record, but usually doesn't completely knock or he'll stun people doesn't completely it's the knock. one you don't see coming and he's so dynamic yeah he, he stings you with the one you don't see coming but he I, doesn't quite put you away i mean you take away the the conor mcgregor icing in 11 <laughs> seconds or whatever and jose aldo has been very very yeah, durable yeah, able yeah. to go five rounds of the, over the course of his career so over two and a half rounds um even i don't know what the price is on this but like even if I mean, the price that I got on that over two and a half rounds kind of gone now. It was like basically a pick em price. It's probably up to like minus 180 or so right now. But I mean, I don't know what the other totals are off the top of my head. I wouldn't be surprised to see this go to the decision, but like an over three and a half may be worth yeah, your while. I, I that you type 100%. of thing. That's kind of where my head's at on this fight. Let's move on to the next one. We got uh, Rose Namajunas taking on Jessica Andrade, the rematch, and this fight was actually supposed to take place a few cards ago. It's all such a blur during the quarantine era. Um, this was like two pay-per-views ago, I believe it was supposed to be on. Rose had like a family member a get family sick. Member, and then she got shook. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, we were talking about it on that episode. We're like, kind of surprised. It was the first, I think it was the one that was supposed to take place yeah, at Tachi, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, like, This is someone who gets shook all the time. It was the UFC 249. It's supposed to take him. place at Tachi, and we're just like, this, yeah, for somebody who, you yeah. know, it's not easy for anybody. But, like, she seemed like the wrong person to be on that first card. Um, and then, obviously, you know, the family issues, and, or the, some, the person in her family uh, got sick with uh, COVID-19. And, you know, uh, thoughts and prayers to her for that. But we saw this fight before. Rose looked amazing. Round one, oh my God, Rose is back, Rose is back. Round number two, oh my God, Rose is back. Oh my God, she's dead. Dead, dead. Plus 175. Can we see the same thing again? Can Jessica Andrade pick up? Like Jessica Andrade, big time strength advantage, as we were saying last time. They're dangling this carrot in front of my face, Cody, and I want to eat it. I want to, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to end up 
on Jessica Andrade plus 175, maybe even Jessica Andrade inside the distance um, if the price is right. But I wanted to talk to you before I do anything crazy. It's dog or pass, because even if you were picking Rose Nama Yunus, you're not taking her at minus 210. Like, really? And it's not even just... It 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 wasn't a master first round. It wasn't a master performance first round. It was near close. But you can see the light kicks are starting to add up by the end of it. She kicks the shit out of it the first four minutes. But then you see, oh... And Josh is still there. Oh, and Josh is closing that pocket. Mm-hmm. And, and that was the whole narrative going in. Like, and Josh is not going to stand with her. She has no reach. It's like 62 inches. She get little T-Rex arms on her. How is she going to outstrike not only a credible kickboxer in Rose Namajunas, not only a credible kickboxer who knocked out the most credible of kickboxers in, in, in uh, Joanny and Jacek, but just like she fights long. Like, how are you going to outstrike her? And then in the beginning, she, it appears she's attempting to outstrike her gets bopped up, needs to go to the slams, and yeah, that slam. So if we're now betting on Jessica Andrade, we're not betting on the slam takedown again. There's no chance she's going to KO her with another slam takedown. There's no way Rose holds on to the Kimura too long this time. But what we are banking on is Andrade can get those takedowns. The reason why um, Rose kept going to that Kimura grip is because she knew she was getting taken down. So that was her defense to it. In all camps, she was probably practicing, when she gets it on your hips, go to the Kimura. Now this camp, you ain't practicing that anymore. No. So maybe she's going to work on something else. But again, if Andrade gets in on your hips, it's too late. Like She's just too strong. She used to slam around 135 pounds like Raquel Pennington, mm-hmm. like a sack of potatoes, would gas out. But now she doesn't gas out. She keeps going. My problem is that after she beats Rose, it's like, man, she's on top of the world. And she gets the Whaley Zhang fight and just recklessly runs right into the punch and just gets knocked out. Reckless, Paul. Reckless. Now in this fight, that's what I don't know. I need her to run in reckless again. I need her to fuck it, fuck the punch. Maybe it lands. It's an MMA fight. Yeah. But I, I need you to do the exact same thing you did against Wei Lei and hopefully not get hit. But you need to close that pocket because we know what's going to happen. Yeah, we can't, we can't fight at distance. Yeah, and I just don't know if she's... I, I, she doesn't have great ring IQ. Yeah. I don't know that she's not going to go into this fight and be like, well, I've been working on my hands. It's like, no, you need to... And then that comes back to the fact that this is only a three-round fight. Luckily, the so she doesn't get started late, and then she, it's just takedowns versus getting your ass kicked standing. It's going to be a close decision. If it is a close decision, you still want dog one seventy five. Exactly, but it could be a pass. Is all I'm saying. This could be a just move away. And the thing about it is that I'm a, you're willing to take on a little bit of risk when you're getting a plus one seventy five, yeah. right? Seventy two hundred bucks. If these lines were flipped and we have these questions about about Jessica yeah. Andrade, it's a totally different story yeah. altogether, right? But plus 175, I've already seen her absolutely deaded. Like, she was deaded um, with that slam. Um, I don't think it's going to happen the exact same way, but I think there's a big strength advantage, and Rose has to fight the perfect fight. And Rose is very capable of fighting the perfect fight. But at this price, I'll be your huckleberry. Let's uh, move uh-huh. on. Quick update from that over under two and a half rounds. Over is minus 175 now. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I still think it... You can parlay that up, I think, but, um, but yeah, I got I was in at like minus one fifteen. Um, what's it to go to the de- go to decision? To go to decision on Jan versus Aldo. We're talking yeah, about. Jan versus Aldo. Uh, Jan by decision is plus two seventy five, and Aldo by decision is plus. 375. Yeah. Hey. I don't I don't want I want just like over four and a half to go to yeah. the distance. Yes is plus one twenty. Hey, quick okay. quick quick question here. So I so I'm leaning towards nice. just a, a pass on the Rose fight. Now just question. This would be tempting to me. Andrage by decision. What's that pay pad? That's probably like nine to one. And no, Andrage by decision good, is like five, six. plus three hundred. That's yeah. it, eh? That's not enough. Nah, because she could smash her on her fucking head again. 100%. <laughs> I don't see it happening. What are the chances? What's her inside the distance? There's just too many ways to win a fight, man. Sorry. Sorry. Pat, Pat, thank you to Pat for being our... <laughs> yeah, I, I have yeah, it yeah. open in front of me. Fight oh, to, you're the best. So fight to go the distance. Uh, like, you want... It doesn't have... The odds, at least on that fight, don't have... Like, they just have specific round betting. No, but like, uh, Andrade inside the distance, not there? It's not there, no. What about uh, go best fight odds? Ah, uh, whatever. Whatever. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, Andrade or Andrade inside the distance, if the price is right. That's I gotta. Where I gotta. My if mind she goes up. to a wrestling and wins two of the rounds, the decision. But three hundred is just not. Yeah, fair enough. I'd, I'd want better. Than that. Amanda Rebus takes on Paige Van Zant. Rebus minus nine hundred. Paige Van Zant plus six hundred. Cody, you got like crazy parlays. I've seen oh, on the, the internet. Yeah, right. People have Rebus. seen <laughs> that. Uh, Cody's about to take some monsters down. Uh, Rebus is on that, so uh, tell us why you added Rebus plus nine or minus nine hundred. 
to these texts. Okay, so yeah, even when the fight was first announced, it was just like, oh, Rebus all day, and it opens at like 240, and then it's like 300, and it's like, get some more of it. And it's like minus 400, it's like, oh, all right, get some more of it. And then by the time those parlays came out, she's at nine to one now. It's not really playable. It's certainly not on a singular bet, but it was like, whatever, because she had got so many big dogs on this ticket anyways. With the minus 900, it won't affect none. And so, honestly, Paige Van Zandt has got one foot out the door. She's never been a great UFC competitor to begin with. I think she's been marketable. She's a pretty girl. The reason I actually do have my shirt on is because I'm auditioning to be maybe a backup, maybe a, a content guy for free ones in the event that she loses this fight and decides to go that direction. She's just not... I'm, I'm not going to say she's not a fighter because, honestly, this girl wants to win. She's got the desire. She is scrappy. It's just the talent's not there. The skill's not there. Can you make up... A skill discrepancy with an insane work ethic? Absolutely. But she just has too many interests outside of the cage. This is someone that was obviously on Dancing with the Stars. This is obviously someone that, you know, they gets a little bit of extra media attention. Spends someone a lot that, of time making TikTok videos. Dude, TikTok and Instagram. And then you got to realize she leaves. She left uh, Reno Combat Club in Nevada and she went to Team Alpha Male. And the, the owner of that gym called her out hard. It was just like this fucking bitch. We've spent a lot of time working on this girl. She came in here, didn't had like a karate background, didn't even know how to punch or kick. He's like, we spent a lot of time developing her. And the second she got a big fight, she just left and went to Alpha Male. Then she hangs out at Alpha Male, and she's dating Cody Garbrandt. Andre Feely's just in love with the girl. And then Garbrandt leaves her because he wants to be a champion. And remember, remember, she was like, you know, he wants to focus being on a UFC champion. I'm focusing on being a UFC champion too. Maybe someday when we're both champions. Like, what the hell are you talking about? UFC champion. Then she leaves and she goes to Oregon. Again, very pretty girl. And she could be making as much money the UFC's paying her to fight literally in any promotion. I bet mm -hmm. you 1FC would pay her Boku dollars. I bet you Bellator would pay her Boku dollars. I literally bet any promotion out there. She has more winnable fights in those promotions. They're all more winnable fights. It's just a good business opportunity, B business investment. Listen, this is the last fight on your contract. We've opted not to resign for them because they're offering you, lo they're lowballing you and offering you 100,000 a fight, let's say. Whereas these other promotions, you make $100,000 a fight to fight Beck Rawlings, right? I think I'd rather fight Beck Rawlings than Amanda Reeves. Let me think about that one for a second again. No, no, definitely. And they both got fakies now, too. So it would be a marketable fight between Paige Van Zandt and Beck Rawlings. Battle of the fakies. Uh, no tattoos versus tattoos. Barbie versus, I don't have a good name for that. Rosie the Riveter. It sells itself, Paul. Anyways, I don't see her winning this particular matchup. But 9-1 to one is just a terrible price mm -hmm. uh, on any women's fight. <laughs> Unless it's Valentina Shevchenko versus somebody. I'm not paying 9-1 to one on any of them. The parlay, it was a long-ass parlay. Didn't even know if it would get through as far as it did. It did. Now, obviously, I need Rebus. We're riding hard on Rebus. But, um, yeah, the line should have sat at, like, 5-1, to 6-1, to one, maybe 7-1. to one. Paige Van Zandt's been off long enough because of the arm surgery, then another arm surgery. And because she's young and her boyfriend or her husband now, Austin Vanderfort, the motherfucker is a killer. I know Gabriel Checo beat him in overtime by submission on that last submission underground car, but like this dude's legitimate, undefeated MMA prospect, and has a crazy work ethic. It's not crazy to think that Paige Van Zandt made improvements, and but we we just don't know. We're going in blind, and that's fine, but not at nine to one. So, I, I yeah, Rebus wins, but no, nine to one is just a bad price tag. I think is the is the essential decision here. What I got? I just got a DraftKings question with this, Cody. Yeah. Is she gonna score enough? Because it's just like it's 50-50 to go to decision by the odds. Like, yeah, what gonna... what is what is Rebus by decision? Rebus by decision is minus 120. The fight to go to the distance is minus 120, minus 120. Rebus by decision is plus 110. Yeah, I so, like her by decision uh, because so, so I want I. So I keep I. I keep the I've I've seen people like her inside the distance. One, it's a 125-pound women's fight, just not too many finishes usually as there is. And two, I keep I thought back to Paige Van Zandt versus Rose Nami Yunus, and she fought through some bad. She situations, fought through some man. horrible situations in a five round fight. Her arm seemed like you can't do an arm bar to her. Like her arm was like just bending in all sorts of directions. Maybe that changes after surgery and so forth. But yeah, it'd be Rebus by decision. I don't I'll think I think with the that. other with the other championship fights up top, I think Rebus will probably fly under the radar in terms of ownership. But, I mean, Usman, Volkanovsky, Jan, all of those guys have very, very clear paths to 100 points. Yeah. Uh, when I was just on the site, uh, I'm just looking at, like, the odds. The odds, like, flipped in real time. Usman's down to minus 250 now. Yeah, good, good. I mean, yeah, there's more George. There's just so many George tickets coming in. People love Street Jesus. Well, people also want a dog, and this is a dog that's going to fight for your dollar, yeah, right? Do He's price not going to roll at, over. At here. all times, do price shopping. Because there's, there's certain sites that have... 
Usman as low as minus 220, and there's other sites that have him as mi- as high as minus 300 right now out there. Like, it's uh, maybe minus 300 may be gone, but like minus 280 and upwards. So, yeah, do price shop. If you have multiple accounts, that's always the best way. But uh, I recommend playing on DraftKings Sportsbook. Playing on DraftKings Sportsbook is the number one way to go about it. Yeah, okay. If you're not so, so then just to, to, to cap off this, then, then yes, nine to one straight up. What the fuck? But plus 110 by decision. Just like Paul said, not only does she make it deep into the fifth and she's bloody and she's get gashed up against Rose Namajunas, but the fight with Jessica Rose Clark, she moves up to 125. This is another reason she's going to lose this fight. She's not a flyweight. She's a strawweight. Mm-hmm. She fights at 125 because she doesn't want to cut the weight anymore. Yeah. And because of the fakies are weighing her down. <laughs> but but she's not. She's just not big enough for the weight class. What I'm getting at here is she fights Jessica Rose Clark. She broke her arm in the second round. Yeah. And she did not look to quit. She looked to fight on with one arm. So, again, this goes back to, is this girl a fighter at heart? 100%. Well, this is the UFC. This is the epitome of fighting. This is you have to be on your game. And because of that, yeah, I'm just not getting behind old... Paige Van Zant, mm-hmm. 12 we, gauge. We got uh, Volgan Ozdemir taking on Yuri Prochaska. Any hot takes here? Minus 155, plus 135. Let's RDLs. get a dog, baby. Yuri finally into the UFC. This guy has been the most entertaining light heavyweight not in the UFC. I mean, he's just entertainment personified. He's a thrashing machine. If you've watched him in any of his time in Ryzen, most have been competing on the Japanese regional scene. Seven fight winning streak. Sorry, 11 fight winning streak. Just crushing guys, Paul. He's long. He's versatile at the weight class. And above all else, he's got solid cardio. Like he just put, keeps putting it on you. I was always worried because he's kind of a long ranger guy at, the, at, at 205 that maybe a, a short, stout power wrestler was eventually going to be his demise. Here's the thing. Ain't not a whole lot of good wrestlers at 205 that are these short, stocky, going to take you down and hold you down. So he's having great success. And also King Mo, the last guy to beat him, employed that game plan and eventually was able to finish him. And in the rematch, you just see the developments this guy's making. Now, because he's from... Uh, Czech Republic. He's from the Czech Republic, and is, I, I don't ever really know what his training conditions were to begin with, but I'm going to assume. He got the call. You're signed to the UFC. I'm assuming he is in good shape, and I would think that this, these crazy quarantine tests, it's not like, oh, man, here's a guy that's used to getting quality rounds at AKA or ATT. It's like, no, he's prepared. He knows how to keep himself prepared. Perfect. I would liken him to, and I'm a big Alexander Rakic guy, but he's he's a more dangerous more refined version of Alexander Rakic. Ooh, like now you look at Volkan Uzdemir, his last fight, he robbed Alexander Rakic. It was a close fight. He actually got outstruck on the numbers and he did get taken down. Most media members, I think it's like 75% of them, scored it for Alexander Rakic. And yet Uzdemir gets the close split decision. Outside of that, I'm just not overly impressed by him. Yes, he's got that no-time moniker where he knocks you out really quick, but beyond that, he doesn't have very good cards. And that was just a quick run, and that, it was a quick that run. just kind of feels like... Nisha Cherkinov. You know yeah, what I a mean? A bunch of like, guys. Right, yeah, Jimmy Manoa. Like, you touch a couple guys, they fall over. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, it's like, I got a UFC title fight against Daniel Cormier, <laughs> and it's like, it's, it's non-competitive. And then after that, it's like, okay, well... Go and fight the actual prospects of the world. And it's just like Dominic Reyes. Like, man, he's, you know, it was a good fight, actually, but not, I'm not beating Dominic Reyes. Okay, well, go and take on uh, Anthony Smith. Loses to Anthony Smith. Now, mind you, here's key in the Anthony Smith fight. He starts out great. He starts out really good in the first round. The second round, he starts to fade. Now he's getting touched up. In the third round, he basically collapses to the ground. Anthony Smith takes his back and chokes him out. He's just not one of these guys that goes hard for three. Mm-hmm. Against Rakic, he surprised me. He didn't fall apart or anything like that. He fought through. But I think it's going to be a much, much, much more difficult task against Yuri Prakaza. He's minus 135. We know what we're getting ourselves into. He's going to fight for your dollar. He's yes. got a great chance to go out there and knock out Volkan Uzdemir. And I am very firm on this. I will never... Bet anybody losing to Anthony Smith. Not going to happen. Not on my watch. Name one guy Anthony Smith's beaten that you would put money on. Shogun? Rashad Evans? Alexander Gustafson? No, fuck that. Hector Lombard? No, they're all done. What about Andrew Sanchez? What about Elvis Mutopchich? No, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's... Beating. That, that's why we cash the ticket yes, on Glover. Yes, that's why we, Old we, man love, Glover. we love 42 fading. rolling in there, cashing one plus, plus 160 tickets. You fade Anthony Smith, but he's got a reputation. He fought for the title. People know who he is. Volkan's got a reputation. He's got he's got all these things. And, and that's why he's sitting at minus 155 over Yuri, who I believe should be, after a competitive first round, touch this guy up and knock him out in the second and the third. This is by no way a lock. I'm not telling you a 135 is a lock. Put him all your tickets. I'm telling you this is an underdog. I like 135. I'll be playing him. So oh, here, oh, how about this? Instead of just betting him at plus 135, you say this goes past round one. Round two, Yuri, 10 to one. Round three, Yuri, 18 to one. Yeah, so if you put $100 on round two, Yuri, and $100 on round three, Yuri, then at the the most Yuri, the least you can win is 900 bucks if you got the second round finish, and 1700 bucks if you got the third round finish. So, uh, yeah, yeah, tasty. I think, I think Volkan is a good enough fighter to last the first five minutes, but 
Yuri just keeps coming, man. So hopefully this is his UFC debut. I'm high up on him. People that have watched him outside of other various promotions are high up on him. But he needs to go out there and make a statement in his debut. That's what I'm hoping he does. All right, so here's a dog that I actually I took a little bit of bad action, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, I took uh, Elijah Zaleski at like minus 120 uh, last week, expecting him to end up being the favorite in this spot. Muslim Silikov is minus 135, and Zaleski is plus 115 now. And now I see on paper, I see the understanding that Muslim Salikov, uh, you know, the sultan of spin. Yeah. Um, dynamic stand-up fighter, really entertaining to watch. She can knock out just about anybody. Zaleski gets into wars. Maybe he gets clipped here. But I've seen other parts of Zaleski's game before. When he knows that he's in a striking match against somebody who may have the advantage, he can take it to the ground. He can grapple a little bit. I haven't seen the same thing from Salikov. So that was my, my original mindset when I made that bet I'm like ah he's gonna end up being like minus 160 by the time we get to fight time and it has the line movement has been exactly the opposite of what I thought was gonna happen that's all well and good I still I would I'm not gonna double down on my investment I've already put my money in and it wasn't exactly a spot that I was gonna smash but uh plus 115 Eliza Zaleski, more paths to victory here for me. Yeah, the Sultan of Spin, it, also known as the King of Kung Fu. And this is what got me worried, is Zaleski's like, I can't wait to try Capoeira versus Don't Kung Fu. It's like, no, take him down. Try yes. wrestling versus Kung Fu, Please. dog. I can tell you, Capoeira versus Kung Fu probably won't go very well. Wrestling versus Kung Fu, that's the Sneaky move. fight of the night prop here. And you know something? You're right. Zaleski Dos Santos loves standing and banging, but he's not that dumb. There's no. a, he, he knows... I should probably take this fight to the ground at some point. And he's able to get the fight to the ground at some point. I didn't think he, well, it was a close fight. I thought he did beat Konchenko, but God damn, that's way too close of a fight against a limited guy like that. But his, he does take him down. He gets outstruck, but he's able to take him down. You look at other fights, he mixes in those takedowns pretty decent. His cardio, not terrible. And that's where it's easy to just buy right in on Muslim Solikov. He's a human highlight reel. Mm -hmm. He either spins and clocks you in the face of something crazy spectacular and knocks you out, or... What else has he got? And then and then I think that's key here. You look at his UFC run, and they just haven't really matched him up against anybody that was going to do that. In his UFC debut against Alex Garcia, bang. This is a guy that comes in with all those spinning back kicks, comes in with all this, this crazy highlight reel, comes in with all this hype, and he actually was a minus 220 favorite over Alex Garcia. And Alex Garcia, very limited from TriStar, mm -hmm. by the way, of Dominican Republic, just took him down. And I remember Faraz and them were just like, dude, just, just take him down. He took him down, and I remember the first takedown, it was like, Salakov doesn't know how to get up. Mm -hmm. He doesn't even know what to try. That's why I'm surprised in order by, to this, get up. by this line. Right, but Ricky Rainey is a one-dimensional striker. And Nordine Taleb, well, he got knocked out pretty quick. Didn't attempt to take him down. And then Leonardo Stratopoli, he was not handing him down. So there's an idea here that Zaleski's a capoeira guy, and he's saying, I can't wait to test my guy. If he chooses to take him down, he is a live dog. And I 100% agree. Plus 115. Earlier it was 25. It looks like the money is rolling a little bit. This could go off near as even, but... It's just a dog or pass. If the fight stays standing the way Solikov wants it, he's a little bit sharper, he's a little bit more technical, and he has a tremendous amount of power. That's Zaleski's problem. Zaleski's chin's not great. It's okay, but he'll get into a firefight and he'll get caught. And if it stays standing for a prolonged period of time, Solikov's gonna knock him out. If he just goes out there and gets these takedowns, he might only need a few takedowns. Mm -hmm. Solikov ain't getting back up, man. No. I, I seen I seen people talking about Solikov. Uh, his wrestling's improved. He took down Steropoli three times. Okay, first of all, taking down Steropoli doesn't mean shit. Second of all, taking someone down doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to get taken down yourself. And third of all, if I'm so good at striking, and this guy literally only wants to strike and is not very good, what well, fuck am I even trying to take him down in the first place? So, I, I don't know. I'm not fully sold on him. And I would say Zaleski plus 115, live dog. So, dog or pass on that one. We got Mac one Amerikani taking on Danny Henry. Mr. Finland is minus 200. Danny Henry is plus 170. Who you got here? Danny Henry's another live dog in that you just don't realistically know what you're going to get out of him. His first two fights in the UFC, it's like, oh, dude, this guy looks good. Against David Tamor, you know, or sorry, Daniel Tamor. Bad Tamor. Uh, bad Tamor. It's just like, uh, it's a sloppy fight, but he gave an okay account of himself. And so you got Scottish Muay Thai versus Swedish Muay Thai, whatever. It's that second fight. It's just like, man, me, Hakeem Duwadu is legit. And not only does he drop him, the second punch he hits him with, he then chokes him out cold with a standing guillotine choke. Maybe this guy's versatile. Dan Ige runs through him like a hot knife through butter. But on one hand, it's like, shit, Dan Ige is legit. So Ige takes him down submits him very easily. And I think that's what's easy to think about in this fight. Makawan Amerikani, 
is not the best wrestler in the division, but he gets everybody down at least once. It's like this guy. He can't wrestle for three rounds. Is his no, because he just burns himself out clean, just chasing and chasing and chasing. And oh, you got back up. I'll just rip you back to the ground. And that's what fucked him up against Burgos. Mm-hmm. It's like he exerted so much. He wins the first round against Burgos. Second round, he's tired. And the takedowns aren't coming as easily. And the third round, he's a sit and target and he gets knocked out. Mm-hmm. Could that theoretically happen here? He just exerts himself so hard against Danny Henry. He gets caught late in the third. Maybe, but Danny Henry's not Shane Burgos. So, Mac wanted Miracani's game plan of getting those takedowns and holding them down for the first two rounds, winning the first two, maybe losing the third and winning a 29-28, very much on the table. Mm-hmm. I would like to take Mac wanted Miracani. I believe he'll get the decision. But the guy's got a, snack, a, a nasty little anaconda choke. The problem with going for all those takedowns and allowing your guy to get back up is a lot of time they'll get back to their knee. Danny Henry's long and lanky. He does have a long neck. It is there to be exposed. I'm not super confident that Maquan Miracani doesn't slap up some choke. And I'm not super confident that Danny Henry doesn't wilt this guy down and finish him late. So as far as fight goes the distance, I'm a little bit weary on that. Mm-hmm. But I will take that Maquan Miracani by minus 200. Don't love it, but that, that that is the pick. Leonardo Santos versus Roman Bogatov. Santos, minus 175. Bogotov, plus 155. You got anything here? Okay, so this is going to be my probably look like an idiot by next week or by Saturday at oh, fucking no. is 8 o'clock. Is somebody about to get saftic Someone's about to get saftic oh, no. It's Roman Bogotov, baby. Okay. Leo Santos is tailor-made to kill this man, right? I just, I, I don't, I think he's, Bogotov's going to find a way to win. Bear with me on this. So, okay. so Leo Santos, right? The guy you do not want to go to the ground with him. He's a seven-time BJJ world champion. I mean, he's known for flying armbar win over George St. Pierre in a grappling match, going to the ADCC. He's on another level. You don't really want to grapple with this guy. Bogotov seems like one of those pretty much one-dimensional power wrestlers that just likes to grind you and stay on top of you. That's a recipe for disaster right off the bat. As far as stand-up goes, Bogotov is very hittable. He doesn't have a particularly long reach, and he overextends on everything. <laughs> Meanwhile, Santos, this guy's striking, for whatever reason, Paul, refined. I mean, he's knocking out Kevin Lee. He's knocking out Stevie Ray. These guys are known to have good chins. He's making it look easy. Everything's sharp. Everything's linear. Got a decent little jab on him. There's a lot to like. So it's like, why, why are we looking to fade this man? It's like, bam, 40 years old. And you know me, Paul, sometime train's gonna fall off and i think that this is gonna be the time for leo santos it's really easy to think how good leo santos looks when he's finishing those guys but he finishes those guys really early my thing on leo santos is i don't think he's got a very good gas tank i don't think he's got a very good gas tank at all this goes back all the way to say the efren escadero fight right where he loses the second round and he flat out gases and in the third round a poor decision by efren allows leo to get on top he gets the decision right the anthony martin fight he lost the first round to rocco martin on the basis of he landed Five significant strikes in the first round versus seven for Rocco Martin. He lost the first round, but he submitted them. Second, this is a young Rocco Martin. This is five years ago. Then he beats Kevin Lee. Wow, big win over Kevin Lee. Then, unexplicably, he pulls out of the Evan Dunham fight because of an injury and spends a year on the sidelines before the Adriano Martins fight. This is where I want to get technical on this one. The Martins fight, the first round, he lands five strikes. The second round, he lands seven strikes. And the third round, he lands a grand total of, I believe, another five strikes. He wins a split decision. Just want to get the exact number. I think he landed 26. He landed 23 significant strikes, Paul, over 15 minutes versus Adriano Martinez that had 34 on him. He just doesn't throw anything, and he gets tired. He knocked out Kevin Lee early. It looked good. He knocked out Stevie Ray early. It looked good. He's not going to fight beyond five minutes, I don't think. And with Bogotov saying, is like, Bogotov just seems to keep going. And he's fought five rounds before, and he just keeps going. And he's just one of these undefeated Russian... Tough guys, even though he's giving up those striking advantages I talked about, I think after the first round, he's just going to throw more and work him more. And the wrestling will be used to not go to the ground with this guy, stay up, and just chip him away. He probably loses the first round, wins two and three, and it's a, it's a greasy, close, on the scorecards decision. I don't think he fights, I don't think he finishes Leo Santos, but I think it's a, it's a greasy decision that goes Roman Bogota's way. And because it's plus 155, I would have it would have to be a dog or pass situation for me. So this is gonna be another dog that I'm looking at, Roman Bogotov. It ain't gonna be pretty, but I think you gotta grind down Santos, take him into some deeper waters, and expose the gas tank. Prop bet Pat. Prop bet Pat just wants to ask that if I'm watching this live and I see that Bogotov loses the first round, do I just go bet him live then and I get a better number than plus one fifty? Yeah, for sure. What is him by decision? I'm not even talking about by decision. By decision is not great. It's only plus 240 right now. But yeah, like if he loses round one, you're going to get that's, that's, Honestly, that's, that's I, enough points. I'm a degen. I'd hit that because I don't think he finishes Leo Santos. But I, just please, if you're going to tape study this fight, go watch Leo Santos beyond round one fights is all I'm asking. Mm-hmm. Go watch him how he looks in round two. He doesn't throw much. He stands at range. And Bogota's a bit of, bit of a bit of a madman, bit of a wild guy. 
But yeah, to answer Pat's question, if it's going to be if, close, if, he'll get the decision. If, if he's down, if you know, if Santos comes out has a hot first round, That's it could be interesting it, yeah. in that first round window, getting an even better price on uh, on on a new pro- a promotional newcomer. Those yeah. lines are going to get yeah. steamed. Yeah, and and try to take as much analysis. Let's say let's say Leo Santos beats him with the striking, but he attempted two takedowns and didn't and didn't come nowhere near. Well, then the info that we just analyzed, like fuck, he's not going to get him down. So does he look a little bit tired? Is he going to keep out striking him? And that's my thing with Bogota. I think he'll just he'll keep coming forward, keep the fight standing, grind this guy against the cage, throw a little bit more than him, and then once the judges read out the decision, it's his name, not Santos. All right, so we've officially fallen off of the cliff of this card. Um, I have, don't have any wagers on the next four fights. There is one spot that I'm considering a wager, but like he's one of your boys, so you probably know who I'm talking about. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll cross yeah, that bridge yeah, when yeah. we get there. Uh, I, I needed to talk to you about that one before sure. I made any sort of action, but uh, we'll get to that one when we get to it. We have uh, Marcin Tybora taking on Maxime Grishin. Uh, pretty much a pick him here minus 115, minus 105. Any thoughts? I mean, Grishin's coming in on super short notice. Who was the guy who was supposed to fight before? Um, and the, Grishin, uh, as of the time of this recording, isn't even in the DraftKings. Uh, no, I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even like fight metric and shit didn't even think Bogota was off. The other one, what yeah. was his last name? It was Romanov. Sorry, Alexander Romanov. So that you've seen that guy? Lots Holy of fuck, he's a, the Hulk. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is this is just it's strange. If you're Tybora, right? They're like, yo, you're gonna fight a guy that's two sixty five. He's basically Romanian Brock Lesnar, and he's just going to try to throw you to the ground and smash your fucking head in. That's, that's as far that as it goes. sounds like a bad time. As far as it goes for Romanov. And then it's like, okay, Romanov's out. You're going to take on Max Grishin. Hasn't fought at heavyweight in six years. Okay. Max Grishin, though, and that's key, I think. Max Grishin has fought at heavyweight. This is a nice-looking record, eh? He's 37-2. and two. Okay. He's 14-6 and six at heavyweight. He's 18-1 and one at light heavyweight. And the two draws against Jordan were both at light heavyweight. Sorry, he's what, he was, what's his record? He's 14 and 6 at heavyweight. No, but you said 37 and 2 when you said it. He's 30 wins, 7 losses, seven, 30, 2 draws. 37 and 2. Okay, 30, sorry, my bad. Maybe seven. I just heard it wrong. No, I, it always oh, sounds like 37. That. 30. Yes. I thought you said 37 seven. and 2. And then you said all these losses. And I'm like, where are all these losses coming from? 30 wins, 7 losses, 2 draws. And yeah, 14 and 6 as a heavyweight, 18 and 1 and 2 as a light heavyweight. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, yeah, obviously. He has a better division. Yeah, very clearly. And as fighting as a, as a heavyweight, sorry, from back in the day, like when he was fighting for M1 and stuff, he's just, he's out of place. He's, not, he's fighting some good guys, don't get me wrong, but he's just not big enough. Drops down to light heavyweight, and all of a sudden he's the guy that's six foot two. All of a sudden he's that long rangey guy, and he's a kickboxer, and he finds stuffing takedowns a little bit easier at 205. He goes on a decent little run. Benjamin signs to PFL. He's known in that PFL run for the two fights with Jordan Johnson, right? Who people will obviously remember from his little big swing in Johnson's little run in the UFC. Mm-hmm. So you'll remember this. Jordan Johnson's last fight in the UFC against Adam Yandiev was at 185 pounds. Mm-hmm. So Jordan Johnson's not, a, you can consider him a 205 because he's fought the majority of his career at 205. But he's six foot one. He's more built like a middleweight. And Maxim Grishin is getting taken down by this guy. And now he's going to fight Marcin Tabora, who, by the way, we just seen in his last couple of fights, the Spivak fight, uh, the Stefan Struve fight. Like, he can wrestle. He don't mind wrestling. Well, what about his striking? He can strike, too. What he can't do is get smashed in the face by colossal heavyweights. Mm-hmm. And luckily, Christian ain't one of them. I, you know what? The, the smart play here... It's a pass. It really is. But but I'm, I'm on the Tybura narrative cool. that I just don't think Grishin has that success at heavyweight. I don't think he's big enough, and he'll probably clock in at about 220. The last thing, this is a little bit greasy, but just... And Tybura will be like my or like 245, 250. He should be 246. I'm hoping that, because this is my greasy theory on this one. He looked awful against Augusto Sakai, right? Mm-hmm. He weighed 257. Yeah. Against Spivak, he weighed 246. 11-pound mm-hmm. difference looked way better. So wait until weigh-ins, then. Right, right. So then With look- these heavyweight guys, it's like they have that extra little bit, but you can, a lot of the... T- a lot of the times, especially like a guy like John Volante, what, like uh, Holy two shit. weeks ago. I, I mean, know. he just he's came still, in he's still way old. too <laughs> fat. Yeah, so it's yeah. like quarantine has been better to some <laughs> and worse to others. So it's like you got to kind of, especially with these heavyweights, it's like, because they're going to make weight. They, obviously, he doesn't have the, I mean, unless he really let let himself go. He doesn't have the ability to go in at 267, right? Um, unless he just like ate, you know. Whatever. He ate potato chips every single day. But dig this. Dig this. Maxim Grishin makes it to... So he loses to Jordan Johnson because it's a draw. Jordan Johnson advances. Jordan Johnson loses to Emiliano Sorti for the million dollars. Sorti, by the way, is another fucking middleweight. And bam, that's the million dollar winner. Grishin's signed for PFL to fight in the next million dollar tournament. Mm -hmm. Oh, geez. COVID hits. 
He gives up a, a ticket in a million dollar tournament for next year to sign for the UFC on a week's notice up a weight class. Is Ali his manager? I mean, I would assume so. But he spent a lot of time in Ohio. He's not Russian Russian. He spent a lot of time in Ohio. I remember him fighting for that NAAFS. He used to train at Stipe's gym. Uh, strong style. Mm-hmm. Anyways, like, yeah, I just, I, I know who he is. He's got, he's probably the superior kickboxer in the sense that he's a little faster and he's a little straighter. But if he doesn't knock Tybura out, Tybura is a fucking adequate striker himself and he'll make him pay in return. Mm-hmm. I, I just can't get behind Christian. I, again, you should probably take the pass on this, but I'd say wait until Wayne's. Tybura at 246 wins against Stefan Struve. He was 246 he won against Arlovsky. He was 244 he won. Anytime he's weighed above 246, he's lost. Keep that in mind. Check what he looks like at Wayne's. All right, so next one we got Rowley and Pava taking on Azalgas Zumagulov. Zumagal- Zumagula. All right, Pat, you are the uh, the expert in nicknames. So over the course of the next like three minutes, I want you to come up for a uh, with a nickname for Double Z here. Oh, uh, I, I just had one pop to my mind, and it is not appropriate for public consumption. All right, let's. Uh... We should just like say it, and then we'll just bleep it, and then we'll just say that it was. Afterwards. Nope. Okay. Um, we got minus one. Uh, Pava is minus one seventy five. Double Z is plus one fifty five. Uh, any thoughts here? The Z Man. Z Man's a live dog because again, I see this fight going three rounds. I see it being ultra competitive. I think I I, I totally see where the love for Roly and Pave is coming in. Guy looks good. Guy looks sneaky good, and you usually get good odds on him. But again, he is one and two in the UFC with the one win being over Mark De La Rosa. So I mean, how can you... got robbed against uh, Kai Kara France. Yeah, he got robbed, but it was a close fight. I rewatched it three times, and I thought he got robbed, but it was a close fight. He's getting hit, and that's kind of the problem with him, right? Kai Kara France is short, stays in the pocket, and even though Pava just keeps coming forward, and, he, and he's longer, and he's rangier, and he uses that pretty good, and he doesn't mind... Se- that's his problem. He doesn't mind a firefight. He doesn't mind stepping in there and throwing down with you. Kai Kara France is able to beat him with a punch, being the shorter man. In the, the fight against Bontarin, he's beating Bontarin standing. Bontrin realizes one of his eyes is swelling shut. He blows his nose out twice. It's pretty much done. He's like, fuck it. Just bum rushes him. And he's really short. But once he closes the pocket, goddamn, he starts to have some success against him. And then it's a cut stoppage, whatever. It was a nasty cut stoppage, but whatever. And then he beats De La Rosa. So even though it's like, oh, well, he's got three inches. He's three inches taller than the ZZ man. And he's got a four-inch reach advantage or something. It's like, okay, you know, maybe he keeps him on the outside. Well, he's not a guy that fights with his length and his reach. He's just never been known to really use those extra inches in the jab. He doesn't really jab a whole lot, right? Okay, well, so so who is Zuma Gulo? Zuma Gulo is pretty bonafide, man. I mean, he's the Fight Night Global Flyweight Champion. And beyond that, man, his last three victims read Tyson Nam, Tagir Ulamabekov, who is... Uh, Khabib's dad's prodigy. He's 12 and 1. His only losses is to the ZZ man. And then he beat Ali Bagatinov in Russia by decision. Legit he UFC caliber fucking, wins. He just beat Tyson Nam, who's in the UFC and looks good, right? Tagir, who is going to take over the UFC one day, and Ali Bagatinov, who was fighting for the UFC title when he was in the UFC. And by the way, they were probably all on steroids because the fights took place in Kazakhstan and Russia. That's a pretty Everyone's impressive. On steroids, it's it's all fair. Of course, it's a very very impressive resume of guys to to have defeated before making a UFC debut. Of course, right? Yeah. I mean, hey, Ali most Bags guys, is like man, title most, challenger. Most guys don't win high level fights and come to UFC. It's like it's like that's where we're like, oh, how's it going to transition? So at least he's fighting those guys now. Perhaps more impressive than that, Paul. This guy has never looked the slightest bit fatigued or tired in any of those fights. And all of those fights were five round fights. He the, literally go watch the last thirty seconds of him versus Bogatinov. He probably throws a hundred fucking punches. He does not slow down. Plus, he's from Kazakhstan, and he was which signed to be on the time, Kazakh card. The timing of the of the events is point. going to be much more in line with what he's used to. Whereas Pavis from Dabu. Brazil, he's flying over. It's like six. It'll be six to eight hours, depending on what part of Brazil he's yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. And, and Abu Dhabi is a very, very, very popular travel destination for Kazakhs. Mm-hmm. When I was down there, the resort was half people from Kazakhstan. And these guys are all built like brick shit houses and take their shit extremely serious. It's like, yo, this guy's never wrestled in his day, a day in his life. It's like, why are both of his ears cauliflower so bad? It's like, they just grow up in combat. It's like, man, it's crazy. I think he'll be ready. I think he's got great cardio. Now, here's his issue. He just swings very, very wild. There's so many openings to hit him. Being the shorter man, 
he covers up a little bit, right? But there's, there'll be a lot of opportunities for Pava to hit him. I just think over the course of three, and I think it goes three, this guy always goes to decision. He's not getting knocked out. He goes, he goes five rounds hard all the time. He'll go three. And Pava, he's tough. He'll go three. This is going to decision. It's who's going to get the decision. Pava's going to land the better punches. He'll probably land the more significant punches, and he might get doubled up on striking stats. Mm-hmm. And I think that is why two of the three Abu Dhabi judges sitting there might go... And by the way, for sake of for sake of you know I've watched these fights, I thought he lost to uh, Khabib's prodigy here. To gear, he got fucking taken down about 19 times over the course of five rounds. The fight was in Kazakhstan, and he got a greasy-ass decision. The fight with Bogatinov, not in Kazakhstan, in Russia. And he brings it to this guy. He mm-hmm. fights hard. What I'm getting at is they're close decisions because that Leonard Garcia flim-flam bullshit strikes again. He does so much. Even if he lands half of it, there's a lot going on. Empty crowd or no crowd, empty arena. Again, this is dog or pass. Because he's coming in at plus 155, I'm thinking decision. I'm thinking close decision. I don't want a minus 175 in a nail biter close decision. Yeah. So again, and I've said the same thing about Zaleski. I've said the same thing against Bogatov. I'm saying the same thing against Zuma Gulov. I feel a little so bit better about him. Same thing about Yuri. No, Yuri's my dog, right? Well, Those he's guys. Your dog, okay. Well, I I, I know I other thought, people are probably thought, picking him uh, too. He's, he's Bogotov, a good looking Bogotov dog. was the the Safdick play, wasn't it? <laughs> Listen, if they both lose, you know exactly. Ovs are just got Safdick on this card. <laughs> right. Is there any other Ovs? No, no. Oh yeah, Salikov, but I I didn't do anything to him. I picked against him. Um, Carl, Carl. Hold on, hold on. I, I did the work here on this one with the nicknames and such. Oh, sorry. I, I thought, I, yeah, I thought that once you had the one that wasn't ready for public consumption. No, no, no. I, I, I kind of workshop this a little bit. Okay, also, like you, you can get uh, my guide to here, Double Z, which is we'll, we'll work on that in a second. Uh, you can get him by dis- to win by decision is plus 260 if you actually think he's going to win. And it's going yeah, he to doesn't be finish people, I'm telling you. All right, so. Double Z is a very logical one. But if you say double Z, you say like Zzz. So you can call him like the drill. You can call him the B. You can do anything like that. Or you just see double Z. What's double Z? That's nap time. You can call him Mr. Dream. You can call him the snooze button. The, the problem, with the, dream. The problem with the sleep dynamic is that he doesn't finish fights, though. And he's not boring. So it's not like he's putting or you to sleep. Or he'll put you like, to sleep he watching it because he doesn't finish. Mm. He's the snooze button. <laughs> the snooze button. I actually kind of like that one. That's hilarious. All right, the snooze button, plus 155, potentially plus 160. I'll have a look. Uh, not a big look, but I'll The last thing I got to say is just, just for sake of argument here, it's actually Z. It's not Z. It's Z. When so. I do the alphabet, I always go Y and Z. Everybody does, but we're in Canadian, so you have to stick to it. It's ZZ top. <laughs> uh, Carl Rosa, uh, Carol. Rosa takes on a Vanessa Mello, minus 240, plus 200. Okay, so... I haven't even looked at so, this fight. So, Carol Rosa's there to get hit, but she hits, man. She landed 174 strikes her last time out, and it's just like she does not stop. Not only that, she's getting hit pretty clean, pretty flush, but against limited competition like Procorpio, it's not getting her attention. Meanwhile, she's got some stinging power, and she's just relentless. She just don't stop. Now, 25 years old... I'm not going to say sky's the limit for her. I just mean she should be continuing to getting better and better. Whereas Vanessa Melo, she she really struggles with pace. Her UFC debut against Aldana, mind you, she should have never been in the UFC in the first place. This is someone who I think was 10 and 5 signed to the UFC. But she was coming off a, a win over Battlefield veteran Jan Finney. Crazy. Anyways. Oh, yeah. Rest, rest in peace her after the 10-7 round that Cyborg laid on her. <laughs> That was like the only time oh, a 10 man. 7 round should have been scored. I agree. Because she was almost dead. So, well, Jan 10 7s don't fame. exist because you're usually dead before that happens. Yeah, she now it's like, oh, geez, now you're in the UFC. She takes on Irene Aldana. Now, the Aldana fight is going to be similar to this in the sense that Aldana just, just keeps throwing and yeah. everything lands. Now, Aldana's a lot taller so and is, you know, a much better technical boxer than Rosa, but she just stays on the outside and just keeps picking her way. What I did like against Melo is that she's got some heart and she's a scrapper. But boy, oh boy, she comes up short on basically all of her punches. She's got some okay leg kicks, but after the first round, when she started to chew her up, she slows right down. Her last fight is the exact same thing against Tracy Cortez. Just She just gets doubled up on the striking stats. Now she's taking on someone in Carol Rosa who would double up fighters that could keep up to her. It's like that's all she does is throw. And so that that's the narrative here is that Vanessa Mello probably has loses the first round. But at least it keeps it somewhat competitive. And then round two, Rosa starts to pull away. Round three, Rosa starts to pull away. And I would love to make that 240 better by taking Rosa by decision. And I think DeGenny clearly still will. 
Uh, Vanessa Mello is tough enough to take those shots the same way she did against Aldana. I think she lasts. But Rosa's got some sneaky power on her, too. Like, she did score a knockdown against Procopio, and she has finished opponents in the past. And mm-hmm. when you're landing that much volume on somebody, and they're 0-2 in the UFC, they're getting cut. Uh, I mean, why fight this one out? You just don't know. So anyways, my pick personally is Rosa by decision. <clears throat> but I don't, I don't love the decision prop. Yeah. If you don't love the decision, this is almost like that other one. Uh, round two, Rosa 12 to one. Round three, Rosa 20 to one. Oh, that's actually pretty slow. So then the fight, the, they're saying the fight's going the distance then. Yeah, it, it, Rosa by decision is minus 120. Yeah, I, I would probably just take the 240 instead of chasing that. Although, you know, I do love chasing better prices. 120 is not bad. I, I just, the gut feeling on that one is that Rosa could finish her and that Mello knows she's on her way out, so might not give up as much resistance as one would hope. I have entirely too much money already invested into this card. So you, so don't, want, probably, you don't want no Rosa I'm versus saying, Mello, eh? This is okay. one of the fights I'm yeah. probably <laughs> taking. I'm probably taking off. If she's going to throw that much volume, like she's 9,200 bucks on DraftKings, like is she better to take than like Jan and Uzman? Like one that quarter kind of, of the ownership, you gotta think. Yeah, yeah like you, everyone, everyone, because this is a millionaire maker. Like people are gonna go millionaire to maker. Top. Everyone's gonna have because like everyone's Uzman, taking Masvidal. Uzman is eighty nine hundred. Like he's gonna be no. Masvidal is gonna be uh, the I most guess popular so, yeah. because he's cheap and everyone likes him and he oh, makes good. all the lineups good. Him. So that that helps me. I have. I mean, my draft king. I I only do single entry, but I have I have the three favorites in the championship fights which i thought was going to be like the most chalk way to go about it but uh, clearly people love up masvidal this week so hopefully that translates over the DraftKings markets as well um and yeah and then we have and then this undercard we like uh, there's a whole bunch of dogs that we like tons so. of dogs i mean it was almost too easy making the lineup this week which a lot of options yeah. i mean the way things have been going for me in the DraftKings recently, it's just like I just lose every single week. So well, this is uh, this would be a crazy week. A lot of options. I've been doing well in betting. Uh, and finally, Martin Day takes on Davy Grant. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. This is the one I've been thinking about. Oh, I know. I'm I know, jumping back and forth. But too. like, <sighs> Davy. Martin he's, Day. He's screwed oh, me so oh, many oh, times Day. before. I just don't know <laughs> if I'm putting money back into him. But Martin Day. Memory serves correct. He trains with, uh, he's a buddy of Max Holloway. They do some training together. Yeah. Hawaiian boy. dude. Um, <sighs> British wrestler. <laughs> How often does that work out? A yeah, couple times with Davy Grant, and we've been on it, but we've also been on the uh, on the wrong side of uh-huh. that as well. Um, I mean, minus 165 day, plus 145 Grant. Can Grant take him down, hold him down, do that twice, and... And be able to hold on in round three. Well, like, that's, absolutely. That's what we're to, hoping yeah. for at this price. Um, I haven't made a play because you are kind of, I think, you, I, I consider you the Davy Grant expert. Um, I mean, you're the mostly the fight expert in general, but uh, Davy Grant is your boy. You've been on him a whole bunch of times. I feel like you have a pretty good grasp of what this guy can and can't do. Um, are you picking Martin Day or Davy Grant in this one? Yeah, it's why I would go another dog or pass. If you feel safe with the, ha- the pass, then yeah, then go for it. But because it's one, minus 145, Davy Grant, if they fight 10 times, I see Davy Grant winning five of them. This is a close fight. This is a 50 50 fight. We can talk about all Davy Grant's flaws and his pluses, and we will, obviously. But let's just let's talk about Martin Day real quick. Why is it that Martin Day is a minus 165 over Davy Grant, considering he's not fought in 18 months and his last fight was a split decision loss to Ping Yu Liu? Now, people will tell me, Cody, did you watch the Ping Yu Liu fight? Martin Day got robbed. It was in China. It was close. He should have won. Fair enough. Ping Yu Liu then lost his next two fights over to subpar UFC talent and got cut. So it wasn't as if he fought a world beater to a close fight where he got robbed. He fought a guy that's no longer with the promotion who then dropped his next two fights. Not especially all that, you know, appealing to me. Now, his thing is, is that he's a tough Hawaiian. He's actually born in Japan. He's Japanese. Lives in Hawaii. And he's a Taekwondo uh, specialist. And you see these kicks at range, man. This guy's good. He also kicks well on the entry. Like, he moves forward. He starts it off with a kick. Allows him to just manage distance very well. His punches are pretty sharp. He's got decent hooks on him. Power's okay. More of one of these guys has got to take you out later in the second, maybe later in the third. Not huge on his power. He's also a tall guy. But it all comes down to the takedowns, man. Davy Grant's an idiot and decides he's going to stand with him. And he might, because he tried to stand with Grigory Popov for way too fucking long. But if he does that, he's going to get outpointed, right? Mm -hmm. Because I honestly think Day's a lot faster. He's ranger, he'll stay on the outside. He'll kick him, he'll land punches. It's if Davy Grant decides, I'm going to get a hold of this guy and take him to the ground, it should be there. you got to realize that Pingu Lu's best success in that fight was taking Martin Day down. Mm -hmm. He tried to strike with him. He didn't throw enough volume. Martin Day was just able to get on top of him. 
Day, as a cash game, safe play, I think he scored 65 points in that loss to Lou, and he lost, right? Mm -hmm. So there's somebody that's got a pretty good basement as far as if you're just, he might lose. As long as he goes three rounds, he's going to throw enough volume. Right, but, but, he's, he's, but because he's, he's fighting $8, off $8, of his, if, he, if Grant's able to get those takedowns, he's fighting off his back, he's not going to score much. Right, and so here's the problem, right? People say, well, when's, when, where do we know Martin Day from? It's like, well, he had that one fight in the UFC against Ping Yu Lu. 18 months ago, right? Davy Grant's a guy that doesn't fight very often. Believe me, Davy Grant hardly fights at all. But at least Davy Grant only fought a year ago, right? It's only a year-long layoff as opposed to an 18-month layoff. But we know Martin Day from the Dana White's Contender Series fight against yep. Jamie Alvarez. Yep. Now, Jamie Alvarez is an ATT guy and a career mid-level guy, wanted to get to the UFC, never quite attained that, was on the Ultimate Fighter. But Jamie Alvarez just takes him down. Just takes him down and fucking beats him on the ground, right? The, the key there is that Jamie Alvarez is a fucking flyweight. So then you look at Martin Day. Martin Day's entire career has been 125 pounds, other than mm -hmm. his last two fights. He beat Brady Huang at 135, first time fighting at 135, and then he beat or he lost to Ping Yu Lu at 135, short notice UFC debut. Then he proceeds to pull out of three fights or two fights, Benito Lopez and Chris Gutierrez, both because of injury. He's 31, Paul. This is not a guy that's made a whole lot of improvements. He hasn't fought in 18 months, okay? So his cardio probably not going to be great. Uh, He's fought in limited competition, and he's a natural 125er. Grant, we need him to just go to his wrestling. Well, that'd be easier against a guy that's 125 pounds. Now, people say Grant looked tired his last time out. Yeah, I'll tell you why Davy Grant looked tired his last time out. He hasn't fucking fought in so long. That's Grant's key problem here is that when he, when he lost, he beat Marlon Vera, okay? He beat Marlon Vera 30-26 on all three judges' scorecards. Scored a 10-8 in the last round. Mm -hmm. Then the Damian Stasiak fight. The Damien Stasiak fight, after that, he took a t almost two full years off. And he lost to Danny Bermude, d to, to Manny Bermudez. Just uh, stick with me on this, okay? Mm -hmm. Bermudez beats him after a two-year-long layoff. Triangle choke in 59 seconds. Then he fights Popov a year and four months after the Manny Bermudez fight. So really, he fights Stasiak, okay? And then between that, he had fought 59 seconds in the last four years. Well, it's understandable that he started to get tired by the end of the round. Now, he was getting ready for Lewis Smolka. He's not hurt. He was a quick, it was a quick enough turnaround. He has fought the more recently. He just got to go to his takedowns. By the way, he got six of them against Grigory Popov, A. So he's got, a, he's got at least a desire to get those takedowns against the pure striker. But B, Grigory Popov's a, a multiple-time Muay Thai champion. Mm -hmm. So give me multiple-time Russian Muay Thai champion that lives in Thailand at Tiger Muay Thai over Taekwondo Hawaiian fucking Martin Day. And yet... Davy Grant wasn't getting fucking dusted that bad. It's just he was striking for too long. Strike, 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 get you on the ground. And the last final thing is Day does enter really good with the kicks, and Grant showed in that fight he's good at catching kicks to convert them to takedowns. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need here. So, Grant, don't be an idiot. <laughs> and 145 by decision. And no, uh, one, it's, it's greasy. 45 straight up by decision. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Give me by decision. It's 45 straight up. By decision, it'll be like 85 or 210 maybe. Yeah. Uh, maybe a little more. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, Davy Grant's not cement. Let's be honest. All right. Um, DraftKings breakdown. Uh, Pat Mayo is in the. What, you're in the uh, Knockout King, right? Yeah, the Knockout King. It's big a, week for Pat. So, so we got to try to get Pat through the finish line. Yeah. Here. So the way that it works is it's a three week final, like a three event final. So I just need to finish in the top half this week mm -hmm. to move on to round two, and then I need to finish in the top half of the fifty the next time around. And then when it gets down to 25, first place is 50K, and I'd like to win that. I mean, you're probably you're down. probably looking to do a cash game kind of lineup. So You know what? That's not how – I've actually – it's weird. Like, you know, I do football breakdowns. I do golf breakdowns and basically galaxy brain the shit out of it. I don't know anything about UFC besides what I sit here and listen to you guys. By far my best DraftKings sport. I don't try to outsmart myself. And the funny thing is we, we – Sit here and talk about what we do, and then I just go out there. <laughs> I watch Pat cash, like cashing these big DraftKings lines, and like honestly, since that uh, season long contest ends, I haven't cashed a single DraftKings lineup on on UFC. But I've been like doing amazing on like betting. I've been doing great. But I but I know what you've been spending your Minus free Rochkov. time doing. Minus I mean, yeah. Rochkov <laughs> absolutely Rochkov. sewered every lineup that one week. There's always one guy who shits. You in did the a shoey though. It was a hell of a shoey. So. Yeah, Always forgiven in the Rosh and, and that worked out for me, though. Like, that happened to me. I had him on the team, but I was playing in these, like, like the $200 single entry. Like, and everyone had Against, them, like, 50 people. Like, you can have right. a loss. That's okay. Yeah. Especially fair. when it's, like, a $7,300 guy. Like, when I qualified, uh, I think the ticket's worth, like, two k to get in. It was, like, a 90-person, 50, like, 50-person, 50 $90 buy-in. Mm -hmm. And, like, boom. boom. That, that adds up. No. All right.
I think it was a bit less than that. So Either way, get... I'm in. But like, I don't play. I, I have no semblance of a cash game lineup because I don't play cash games. So I have three questions for each of you guys, and you give me a quick answer on this. All right, right let's Dra- do. Just we'll just talk about this DraftKings wise. Okay. But you can think about it from a betting perspective. Sure. Which guy or woman on this card, Cody, is going to have the most takedowns? The most takedowns. I would say would have to go to. Uh, Macwan Amir Khani. Okay, but you don't even okay. Let's say just give me a three. No, because because the thing is, is Macwan's top control is not as good as his takedown. So he could get six or seven takedowns. You'll just you get back up, he takes you back down. Paul and I are just hoping motherfucker doesn't get tired after two rounds of that and then get taken down the third. But I would say he looks best. He's eighty six hundred bucks. He's got high upside. He could get a finish. But if he doesn't get a finish, he'll just rack up a bunch of takedowns. His problem is he's got no ground and pound. That's what I don't like. Mm-hmm. But because he might transition on the ground, take your back, go to side control, it might not matter if he doesn't have any ground and pound. And he's going to be a lower end guy because it's such a popular car with big names on it. People are off Mr. Finland now. Like no one's talking about him. I think that'd be a decent play. That's probably the right answer. I'm hoping for mine. That would be, yeah. be Zaleski who just goes out there and goes. <laughs> Davey Grant and Zaleski. We're going yeah, for yeah. takedowns yeah. right out of the gate. Yeah, no, but, that, that uh, would be the but I think Mac Juan Amir Khani would be the most likely. Or he's six hundred dollars more. Okay, all right. Who has the best chance of the quickest finish? The best chance at the quickest finish. Ooh. I'm um, going to say that one is going to go to Muslim Salikov, who, even though we like Zaleski, he, oh, I, or Yuri, man, Yuri could just fucking put it on. I'm him. playing this Yuri guy everywhere. He better fucking win. Yeah, I'm hoping so. Yeah, I want to commit to a shoey if he loses, but it's like 135. Why would I do that to myself? But I like Yuri. Yuri's my guy. I'm backing him. Yeah, that that seems to to make sense. But Salikov's got a massive amount of power. He's 8,200 dollars. If he just lands that big right, and he loves to counter punch, is the thing. So if Zaleski charges at him and he just eats that overhand right, he's gonna fucking topple over. I'm just hoping he charges forward and then dips under for a double leg. Honestly, a lot of decisions on this card. It's like, dude, a this is a crazy card, A lot of potential card, decisions man. on this card. A lot of potential. Last one, then. If there's going to be a ton of decisions, who throws the most strikes of anyone here? I mean, the volume. I mean, we've already seen the Holloway versus Volkanovski fight. The volume in that was huge. I would say Volkanovski, Holloway are both going to throw a ton. Usman and Masvidal should both throw a ton, and I think Usman comes on, on top and throws Usman a lot more. Usman could have the most takedowns, then, too, with five rounds. And then, honestly, like we're, we're thinking about Volkanovski and Usman. They got they got five rounds to work with. They notoriously throw a lot. But this Carol Rosa, man, this is a tailor-made opponent for her just to throw another 174 strike night a night. So... She's a little too much on DK at ninety two hundred dollars, but the ownership flip side would be crazy. She only has three rounds to work with. But as far as yeah. who might throw the mo- most strikes, I'm telling you, this girl throws ten at a time. When she's surrounded by Peter Yawn, Volk, and she's right. sandwiched it's hard to by stand Volkanovsky out. and yeah, Yawn, like to stand out, right? man, she may be a ninety two hundred player who's like eight percent owned. Yeah, I, I, I probably won't use her in that contest, but I'll no, go. Yeah, fair, a million fair, maker, fair. I think fair. she's probably a yeah, a nice little punt or not a punt, a uh, nice little play. But if she goes out, I mean, score, if she goes out and scores more than that, right? here's recently, the thing so. though: she's more expensive than Volkanovski and Usman, and she's got two rounds less to deal with. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm it's just saying. Of, she, I'm did, just saying the ownership is what would be the appealing factor. Yeah, there. but like, what's her chance? Like, what's her chance to lose that fight? Do you think? Out of ten wow, times, ten times. Honestly, and this is no disrespect. It's a fucking women's fight like, in Abu Dhabi on short notice. Like her chances of losing, she she might lose this fight. I'm, okay, on a personal level, I'd say once, once out of ten times, but l- more realistically, probably three times. I yeah, mean, yeah, if, you think, if you actually think that, you should be slamming minus four, two four. Yeah, it's just it's one of those fights where you're sitting there going like, ah, why? And you know what? This whole quarantine situation, we've hit a nice, some nice dogs. We've also made some bozo plays. Always easier in hindsight. That's just like, why? Why would I go in on somebody who? Who the fuck did that to me the other day? Roshkov. No, chick fight it wasn't Roshkov. Who's I all in on? I was like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, Van Buren. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? I wasn't all How did, in on No, I know, but I wasn't. I that wanted was to play Tisha. That was stupid. Tisha was obviously the play. Stupid Cody. Blind and didn't see it, and I'll admit that, but I don't want to fall into the same trap. Vanessa Mello shouldn't be in the UFC, is in UFC caliber, shouldn't be here. To boot, she's 32 years old and about to get cut. Rose is 24, 25. She's on her way up. She looked good in her first fight. She's going to keep trucking. That's the play. But it's like, don't allow that narrative to allow you to just put her on every fucking parlay. I, and then I like this new strategy for breaking down the, I think, we're, we're much more uh, pointed questions rather than running through the same card the same way. What you got there, Pat? La- last one. This uh, John Grisham guy coming in on short notice against yeah. Tybora. <laughs> John if, Grisham. If, Ty- if Tybora <laughs> ends up weighing like 245, like yeah. you said, if he's under 250, he's probably good to go. Under 246, he's good to go. Can he knock this guy out? 
Yeah, he's he's like I mean, ask. Uh, yeah, no. 100%. Who is the Czech dude that he absolutely? What was his name again? The the head kick knockout. Oh yeah, Victor Pesta. Oh. Victor Pesta. Woof. Oh baby. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. And he's I, got head kicks for a big boy too. Like he's he he carries a bit of like a a bit of a keg on him at all times. He doesn't look like a guy who can head kick, but uh, he's got Mar- Marcin tybura has got some 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 tricks up his sleeve. Yeah, for and that's sure. and that's why we were like, yo, watch the Wayans because yeah, if he's two forty six, that leg comes up pace. Exactly. If he's two fifty six, eh, I don't really know how much he's committed to. Yeah. It. And then important to note, Pat, going but to your question, seventy nine hundred. If he's going to be a favorite, he's going to probably be pretty popular. Well, if he's a Maybe favorite, not, but there's he's thirteen a, fights on the card. But he's gonna, also a favorite. But he's a, like, I just looked at it right now. They're both minus one ten. Like if the other guy comes, if Grisham Grisson comes in at like seven thousand, he's gonna be the guy everyone uses just by people looking at the odds. You gotta figure that he'll probably yeah, come in. Yeah. Uh, maybe they'll just do seventy nine, seventy nine, because they might. But Cause, they yeah. might. Th- but whoever gets priced lower between the two will be wildly owned. I think. Yeah, fair. Maxim Grisham, as I mentioned, fourteen and six as a heavyweight, lost inside the distance in five of those six losses. Tybura. Yeah, also, also, not that Tybura is going to be the one to do it, but uh, the late, great Shane Del Rosario, may God rest his soul. Did he die? Yeah, I miss, fucking I miss like that. drug overdose. They say heart issue, but like, when was everybody, this? years ago. Oh, okay, then never mind. I thought you were talking about something recently. No, no, you know Shane Del Rosario, I, I, Strike I, Force I, Heavyweight. And now that he and I just had heard that name in like five, six years. Yeah, yeah, after the old cocaine incident, mm. the Uncle Creepy, Rob Emerson. That's why Rob Emerson and Ian McCall had the fallen out. Anyways, I got too many stories. But, but, uh, yeah, Shane Del Rosario knocked him out in 21 seconds. So it's like, well, I could see a heavyweight guy slamming him one in the head and him going down. It was a long time ago. He has made a lot of improvements. But this is a heavyweight fight between an actual heavyweight and a light heavyweight. I would say... I think it goes the dis- distance. If one of them was going to finish them, I almost feel like Tybura is not quite as durable as, as as he once was. But yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, I, I would think that Christian's got an uphill battle moving up a weight class, not having a tremendous amount of power, and just having relatively little success at heavyweight prior. So, High price fade. High price fade. Rebus. 95 is... Whew. Yeah, yeah, is she gonna, 90, is she gonna yeah. score enough? Like we no. need, you need her to like... With those three title fights up top, like... Somebody in those title fights is going above like 120 for sure. At least one, maybe all of them. Yeah. Like re- they all have paths to getting over 120, which like with her, you're going to need. Yeah, you would need her to go just berserker mode, basically. She'll she'll get Paige down and then we'll stay in half guard, or maybe side control for a bit and just and just rough her up. Beat her, hands down. But mm. I, I think it goes three. And I think Paige Van Zandt also realized being on the last fight in your card, you don't get just give up. She's not want to give up in the first place. But she'll she'll try to give a good account of herself so she can get as good of a contract with another promotion. That one's your high class, yeah. High price fade of the week would have to be there, and then and then another high price fade would be Rose. I mean, nine thousand. I mean, like, is she gonna knock out Jessica and draws really fast and get you that much, or is she gonna have a good first round and then fade? I don't know. Way too many question marks. She hasn't fought since. Lisa and has been staying active. Um, I got one more. I got one more. It's a difficult for you. card. Uh, the snooze button. Our guy doubles. Yeah, yeah. Um, if he wins by decision, will he score points? Fuck yeah! He'll go land 150 significant strikes, okay. and he so, likes. Yeah, so he's on. So he's on the team. Then. Right, and he, he also Lock in likes the snooze button. Yeah, he also likes chasing takedowns. Unpro- unfortunately, you don't take down Ali Bagatinov. You don't take down members of Khabib's vaulted camp. You don't. Tyson Nam is very difficult. The motherfucker is Hawaiian. No, he spent a lot of time in Portland, Oregon. You don't take him down easily. Now against Roly and Pave, like I don't even think it's out of the question that he just bombs on him and then sneaks in a takedown for good measure. And, and shit Kikar like that, shit like that is what's going to keep the fight close. And shit like that is the reason why I think he could get that decision. Plus one fifty five, I'm chasing it. All right. I think we got all of our. I think that was a much more hit him with the PRP. Way, I think that was a much more effective way to break down the DraftKings lineup because we kind of always go through the fights and it's the same kind of you know the same kind of discourse that happens. Uh, Producer Pat. Already earning his keep. Uh, yeah, hit him. Pat, who has signi- a significant investment in this. Yeah, really Pat is very, video. very <laughs> invested in it this week. Yeah, yeah. Pat brought he's his A nice. game just out of out of coincidence. You know he happens he to be in the knockout, knockout, or knockout yeah, yeah, Pat just happens, happens to be in studio producing this show today <laughs> for no reason. Demanded that he's here. <laughs> he was here actually before either one of us showed up. Oh, okay, um, we got a lot of dogs in this week's PRP, baby. Yeah. 
Okay, we're, so on the top end, we're going favorites. On the bottom end, we're going dogs. We got Usman. We got Volkanovski. We got Peter Jan. I, I, I am going to take Rose. I am going to take Rose. And fuck, it's probably not a good idea. But we're going to take Rose. Amanda Rivas. Yiri's our first dog. Zaleski's our second dog. We're taking Maquan. Roman Bogotar's our third dog. Marcy DeBoer is pretty much even money. Uh, Zuma Gulov is going to be our fourth dog. We're not taking Vanessa Mello. Kale Rosa and Davy Grand is our fifth dog. 13 fight offering. I, I'm liking five of these dogs. Listen, I'm not a... Not the fortune teller. Maybe only four of these dogs win. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I, maybe they don't all hit. I'm saying if you were to bet all five of them, if two or three of them hit, you'd make your money. But I'm, I'm feeling good. I feel like this is the type of card where there's a lot of good spots. You don't need to parlay everything together. You could even just hit individually. We talked a lot about props on this episode. Fights going the distance, certain props there. Those are all smart. Hopefully you wrote, took notes down the episode. And then, and then yeah, obviously we're going to try to crush the PRP. And if this one was to hit, oh boy. Oh, I mean, boy, you already have. This thing would pay. If people want to dig through Cody's Twitter, he's people got. Don't want, why are you telling people about that bucks. shit? You got like, Cody's about like to make some like down yeah, payment money this people. weekend if if shit breaks right. Um, so to so so <laughs> throw it out, like the, the props that you guys talked about, you Paul, you had the Jan Aldo over two and a half rounds. Yes. Uh, we kind of brought up the Yuri second round, third round, ten to one, seventeen to one. The Rosa was 10 to 1, 20 to 1, second round, third round, if you wanted to take a gamble on that, that we talked about. Um, and the other one was, let's see, uh, Amira Connie by decision. That's. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. That, one, that one, you're going to be, if he starts gassing in round three, you're. You'll have, you'll well, <laughs> whatever. He's not fighting Shane Burgos, man. He's just got to hold you'll on. You'll be puckered. Here. You'll be <laughs> puckered for sure. He's got to hold on. And also, in no world should you ever have minus 900 on your parlay. That does nothing. I agree. Parlay. <laughs> okay, but it was parlay with like a plus 385 yeah, or something. So. You should have, Why didn't you just bet the plus 385? Because oh, now, now he's don't about to worry. Well, now he's about to buy a goddamn yacht with the money <laughs> no. from that parlay, though. You should see all these greasy. I don't even know the name of the event. You gotta be sure. I, I would love. I hey, if you have some crazy ideas like that moving forward, slide in my DMs. If you want to do these shit ideas. cards where like you can I, hit like plus four hundred winners he has that like you know, we'll three, do shows for them. He has we like don't a need plus to do three, UFC two fifty. He has like a plus three fifty and a plus two fifty on the same I, like I, seven leg parlay, I, and all these euro dogs cash. He just needs chalk to come through to buy a yacht. Tat says that. Yet we fucking cleaned up Cage Warriors, and we're never invited to do a greasy card again. Hey, one last thing, Dana, bring us to the island, man. Like, I don't know how, what I have to do as a Canadian to get there, but, like, <laughs> I'm all a, for Probably a lot if of If you uh, need me, jumping. like, cleaning stuff up, like, I will I will be of service on Fight if Island. You if, you fluffer, can, if you can get me over there. Especially for I, I have there. an in I can do with a person who has private jets. Yeah. They don't own the private jet. They lease the private jet. They can get us a good deal. We can get ourselves over there if need be. Dana, invite us to the island. I would be a great fan. I can be as socially distant as possible. And I imagine you would like to go to the island as well. Uh, I, I would wager and social distancing, probably not a big thing on the island. Probably not. I mean, they are quarantined. It does seem like they're being very safe. I think if you took an honest poll, well, you didn't have to write your name, you just went in. If you polled the entire UFC roster, I'm going to say 80% of them would be like, no, oh, it's not real. At least 80% of What's them. What's not real? The virus. And that are not practicing social distancing and just don't quite act. Yeah, well, back. that's why Mike Brown is... Uh, there's a lot of them that are getting... Well, think about Brown, right? He's been in camp with guys the last I few mean, months. I mean, the only way to These train guys is are to... not staying The only home. way to train is to break the protocols, right? You just... Think about... Think people about, are going to get it. It is what it is. Yeah, but think about all of these guys on this card, right? If they ask you, well, how you been training? What are you supposed to say? Oh, I've just been going to the gym and training. No, it's legal. You can't get your gym in trouble. You know some social justice warrior, motherfucker, is going <laughs> to fucking take this quote... And then contact the government or contact someone in your local area. And because that's just how the world, especially the internet, Karen. works this word these days. Karen. Carol. Carol Rose. <laughs> Karen, Karen. Karen will, uh, will um, definitely be speaking to your manager. Right. So if someone's like, how you been training? It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. You're just uh, at the home gym, you know, running, running blocks. Like, I think you just keep it low key. Like, why are you going to go tell everybody about your situation now? Because these guys are generally not the most well thought of people, they'll just post it on Instagram and shit. You know exactly what they are. You know exactly what they're doing. How could you post a picture of you and 25 teammates and it's just like, oh, you're not even not allowed to have galleries more than five. Like, clearly they don't care. So I, I don't think a lot, I don't think it's going to be a case of a lot of these guys are 
you know, going to be tired because they haven't been training optimally. I think a lot of these guys are going to be tired because they're coming off long layoffs, mm -hmm. right? And long layoffs in Abu Dhabi with a fight that just got made on short notice. You're seeing guys move up weight classes. Guys ask for catch weights. Like, eh, it just gives you the feeling that a lot of dogs are live. And they're giving you good dog prices on... on if I thought this guy's going to get knocked out, but maybe he lands a punch, maybe he lands a submission, I, I wouldn't be betting it. So I think they're going to go to the decision. And these Abu Dhabi guys are going to give it to the Russians, such as Bogatov and Zumagulov. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to happen. We just need to hope for some, some greasy decisions. I think Salikov might knock out Zaleski, but if he doesn't, Zaleski's going to need that close decision. All I'm saying is fun card, can't wait. Pat, you got a question? Yeah, if... Because, uh, what was it, two weeks ago, there was that guy who was the late notice replacement, and he hadn't, like, had his test come back yet. Then it was, like, all of a sudden they didn't know if that fight was going to happen or not. This card starts at 2 a.m. our, like, Eastern time. I, oh, yeah. If you're, like, if you, like, bet, betting is one thing. Like, if the fight doesn't go, you get your money Yeah, back. yeah, it's voided. It on, is what it is. You're on DraftKings, and, like, you're, like, playing for serious money this week. Yeah, you got to be paying attention. You need attention. to keep up on that shit, because cards might... Fights might fall off, and you need to change your lineups immediately. Yeah, very, the, the very best, sage advice. Very sage. If you have thousands of dollars on on DraftKings this week, it's just like I mean, if you have well, whatever is a big amount to you, of course, uh, it's all relative. But yeah, they're like they're like hold up, hold be up. Be on top of these cancellations because I mean, shit's gonna change on a dime. <laughs> they're like they're like hold up, hold up. Jason Witt's test not in yet. We need to wait a little longer. Jason Witt's test not in yet. Put it on the main card. Jason Witt's test not. And then he lasts in the 22 seconds. Like, man, a lot of waiting around for nothing, eh? Mm -hmm. Fuck, that'd be a disappointing experience. I will say, DraftKings-wise, that turned out to be a huge one for me. I took the guy who yeah, knocked Satoshi him out. Yeah, Satoshi wrecked his ass. Uh, and I played, him, I played him. I didn't play him on, like, the full one. I just played him on, like, the main card. And no one had him because they didn't know if the fight was going to go. Yeah. So, yeah. Just, and then, then, then you can risk yeah, it because right, no fair, one had it. Yeah, risk it for enough. the biscuit. So, Plus, yeah. he had good pricing because his original opponent was the favorite. So when this fight got made, it was like they it was one of those that they gave it to me for cheap. So yeah, good luck to Pat this week. Good luck to everybody. Let's get, him, let's yeah. get him. Let's get him to the next round so we can do this whole damn thing again. I think we're gonna drop the next episode on Monday. You around? Yeah, because it's a Wednesday. 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 Show, right? Yeah, I'll be here. Wednesday yeah. night fights. I saw some people complaining about the cards. Just like it's a Wednesday night card. We'll take anything. I'm of used course. to like contender series. Of course. We got Dan Ige versus uh, Calvin uh, yeah, Calvin Cater. Sign me, sign me right up for Wednesday. I want Wednesday night fights every single time. And yeah, Dana, get us on the island. Okay, so I was just thinking I about be that. At the island. Just thinking about that. I was like, if we were on the island, no chance we were doing a Monday show. Are you fucking kidding me? No way. Do a live from, uh, from it would be Yass like Island. It would be like, we meant to do a Monday show, but we ended up on the beach somewhere. Like, mm -hmm. All right, so. Get out of hand quick, I'm sure. As always, thanks to Cody Safik, breaking down the fights with me. As always, thanks to Pat Mayo for all the great questions, keeping us in line. And remember to give, uh, to follow the instructions to get yourself your, uh, Free Millie Maker tickets. Yeah, follow Pat Mayo on Twitter at the PME. Also, rate, review the show, and smash the like button. Thanks. That's how it's done. So for Pat and Cody, I'm Paul. Saying goodbye and good luck. Pat Mayo Experience. It's the Pat Mayo Experience.